Hello guys, good morning. This is Taharan Godla speaking from Tampa Sports Academy. I'm currently a graduate student at the University of Tampa studying exercise science and nutritional science. Today, I'm gonna to cover something important. I'm gonna cover something regarding exercise selection and its effect on hypertrophic adaptations. So what exactly is exercise selection? Exercise selection is an act of selecting a variety of different movement patterns or exercises from a tool of toolboxes. These tools could be exercises, selecting these movement patterns to help augment skeletal muscle adaptations. Now, one of the, one of the most important skeletal muscle adaptation which happens when we start strength training is skeletal muscle hypertrophy. So first, let us define what exactly is skeletal muscle hypertrophy. Muscle hypertrophy is the increase in the size of muscle fibers. To be more specific, it is the increase in the size of each muscle fiber found in fascicles. Fascicles contain muscle fibers and within muscle fibers you have my microfibrils. Microfibrils further contain smaller compartments called sarcomeres. Now these sarcomeres are the location where active muscle tension is produced. This tension which is produced is sensed by the cell via mechanoreceptors and these signals cause a downstream effects converting a mechanical stimuli to a biochemical stimuli and eventually a variety of cellular events cause muscle growth. It signals the muscle growth process. Now, skeletal muscle adaptation to resistance training is provided upon sufficient force production. Now, muscles produce force. Muscles produce force, which we call as mechanical tension. Mechanical tension is just a fancy word of saying the muscle force that the muscle produces to face or to counter external forces. For example, external forces could be a dumbbell, a barbell, it could be resistance bands, it could be machines, etc. Now, mechanical tension stimulates mTOR. mTOR is a switch. A switch, if turned on, leads to an increased amount of muscle protein synthesis. Muscle protein synthesis is nothing but the addition of new proteins. And over time, you see improvements or increases in muscle size. So, what exactly is excess selection? It's a very important variable to consider during programming for athletes as well as general populations. We have to take into account a variety of other factors as well. Excess selection is important, but is it specific to your goal? Are you able to overload in that particular moment? Are you able to individualize it to your own goal or your client's goal? Are you able to auto-regulate it on a daily basis to fit your training style? Now, something to consider before we go ahead, just like a brain thinker would be, why is the barbell squat known as the king of all leg exercises? Is there just one king? Because do we just have one goal? That's not true because we have multiple goals and no one person is the same. But why is the squat called the king of all exercises? What makes an exercise so special for hypertrophy? Now let's talk about what exactly is the specific the specificity of exercise selection regarding different goals. For a power lifter, the goal is to maximize strength on the main three lifts, which is the barbell back squat, the barbell bench press, and the barbell deadlift. Conventional or so more. Hence, these exercises must be selected so that the power lifter can improve on these over time and excel in competition. But for a bodybuilder or someone who has physique goals, simply squatting, simply bench pressing, or simply deadlifting isn't really needed. Because at the end of the day, bodybuilders can choose a variety of exercises. Because what exactly causes hypertrophy? If we recall from the previous slides, it's mechanical tension. And mechanical tension can be produced via a variety of movement patterns. The muscle produces mechanical tension to oppose external loads. We do not have to have a rigid mindset towards exercise selection. We could have the same improvements in low body development using a variety of other movement patterns and not just the squat. Thus, there is more room for selecting exercises to gain muscles. It is not just bench pressing. It could be dumbbell pressing, chest flies, or machine presses. Now, sufficient mechanical tension, as said, as said, below, as said before, will help grow muscle over a period of time, given that the athlete's nutrition recovery are on point. This means that excess selection is, is essential for gains, but there is much more leeway in choosing the right exercise for a particular person or for populations. Now, individualization is very important. It's a necessary means to increase adherence to exercise because we need to consider the, the foremost principle of n equals one, meaning that everyone has different goals. Everyone is different. No two individuals are the same. Uh, people have different genetic variations. People have different genetic or training ages, biological ages, anthropometric difference, different limb length, different limb sizes, different body sizes. They have a variety of different muscle fiber compositions, type 4 muscles, type 2 fibers, like different life stressors, which we have to respect 
and programming exercises for our clients or for our athletes. Now, individuality is just one piece of the puzzle of why exercise selection is crucial for hypertrophic purposes. There is much more to the story, unfortunately. So let's dive deeper into some empirical data regarding this topic. This was an interesting study conducted by Fonsenka and colleagues in 2014, where they had four groups, where one group was a control, which did not increase or did not change or vary exercises, nor did they vary their uh, intensity, so their rep max. However, there were other three groups which either changed one of them, so they either changed exercise or intensity, or they changed both. So the VIV group, the four group here, changed exercises between squats, leg press, deadlifts, and lunges, as well as changed their rep max in an undulating fashion. Now, what could be the results? Pretty interesting. What happened is that all groups uh, that change exercises or did not change exercises, they all saw growth in their quadriceps when measured pre to post. But the group which incorporated the leg press, the lunge, the deadlift, and the squat all together in one cycle, what I saw is they saw more homogeneous growth in all the four heads of the quadriceps. And yes, the group which did not vary much, they saw growth as well, but it was not homogeneous, it was heterogeneous. This means that having a variety of exercises to choose from is something which can cause better adaptations, which people like bodybuilders or physique athletes who need to maximize uh, weak and hacking body parts may have to think about. Now, what could be the possible reasons? Well, the reasons could be each muscle has its own anatomy. For instance, the quadriceps have four heads, the triceps have three heads. Moreover, each muscle has more than one function. Some muscles may cross one joint. For example, you have uh, the radio ulna joint, which, or, which uh, where you see a variety of muscles which cross only this one joint. You have, for example, the three heads of the quadriceps. It could be the, the vastus muscles, which cross only the knee joint. But then you have biarticular muscles, for example, the rectus femoris, which crosses the hip joint and the knee joint. The triceps, the longer the triceps crosses the shoulder joint and the elbow joint. Hence, different functions are seen due to these uh, characteristic of muscles. You see regional hypertrophy and its application, which we'll get to in a second. And other possible reasons could be training muscle at different lengths, training muscle at a longer length or a shorter length. Now, there are some criteria to fulfill when deciding exercises to include in a trainee's training block. In an ideal world, fulfilling all these checkboxes or criteria would do the trick, but there are always some limitations to consider. First is adherence. Adherence is an important factor to consider before prescribing exercises to clients. The longer a client is able to adhere to a program, the greater the results will be over a period of time. Adherence can be decided by a variety of factors, one of them being pain during movements. Programming movements that increase or aggravate pain for a client must be avoided if adherence is the goal. Moreover, exercises can be modulated or altered to fit the client's structure and stru client's capabilities, strength capabilities. Second is muscle force generating capacity. The ability of the target muscle to produce high forces during exercise throughout its range of motion. The, ex the exercise selected to hit a given muscle group must ensure that it trains the muscle through a good range of motion so that the muscle can produce sufficient amount of tension in most stage stages of the exercise or in most parts of the range of motion. For example, for complete quad development, any squatting pattern would be something I would program. However, all squatting patterns strain the quads only at the bottom of the squat where the muscles are stretched or extended, but not where the muscle is completely contracted in the fully knee extension position. This is where a leg extension machine would be helpful. The same goes for dumbbell lateral raises, where the most tension is faced by the muscles in the more shortened position at the top of the uh, lateral raise, but there's nothing much when the arm is raised down. Respecting stimulus to fatigue ratio or SFR. Now, SFR is the relationship between how stimulative an exercise is and how much fatigue that particular movement causes or the exercise causes. An activity or exercise that produces more fatigue but less stimulus is a poor choice compared to something which causes a lot more stimulus but less fatigue. For example, if someone has long femurs, a long torso, he, would, he or she would require to hinge a lot forward during a squat, making it more like a deadlift movement or a good morning deadlift movement. In that case, there's a lot of lower back uh, involvement happening over there, which could cause a lot of lower back stress, lower back fatigue. Now, if the goal is to grow quads and glutes, one can just simply perform a chest supported or a back supported hack squat or leg press or even uh, by green fist spot where you don't have to rely on your anthropometry to produce enough force in the target muscle. These altered changes would provide more stimulus with less lower back fatigue, lower back pain, etc. 
Now, external and internal stability provided to help reduce more forces. Creating stability allows you to set your body in stone, creating an optimal position for the target muscle to reduce a good amount of force. And it is this intramuscular force, which is what causes hypertrophy in the long run. Mechanical tension, a fancy word of saying muscular force. Now, creating internal stability is very important during compound movements where you aren't totally re relying on uh, external uh, situations, for example, in a machine. Now, on machines, this is where machines can come in handy because it allows you to create stability to, because it provides you an external bracing system where you can facilitate increased, where you can facilitate increased force production via the target set of muscle and not re rely on internal core uh, stability. The next is alignment of target tissues with the line of force. Now, resistance training involves our muscles resisting external forces that create a torque at particular joint angles. Internal forces produced by our muscles resist and counter this torque. The most effect efficient way to produce counter force is to directly be opposite to the line of force. For instance, to pull up a car, to pull a car up a hill, the goal would be to pull perpendicular to the car and not at, at an altered angle because that would not be an efficient way of pulling the car. Exercises that allow this alignment would help in increased force production. For example, barbell curls using a barbell for bicep hypertrophy may be inferior to dumbbells or cables. Each individual has their own carrying angle, which should be respected. This is not respected in a barbell, which puts your wrist in a fixed position, not allowing them to move freely. Lastly, training muscles at different lengths. Most muscles are stronger at the resting length, which is the mid length, and stronger also in the longer length under the stretch. However, upon complete contraction or the peak contraction, muscles are quite weaker because there is a lot of overlap between the actin mass and filaments, which does not allow for more contraction to occur. This is called as a length tension relationship. Any single exercise cannot train a muscle throughout its range of motion. For example, the bench press will always train the muscles of the pecs and the shoulders in a more lengthened, long range. But our muscles can also produce force in the more shortened position. And hence, we can use a variety of machines and cables to train that muscle in a more shortened position. The hamstrings are a, group, are a group of four muscles. The hamstrings are a group of four muscles. In most lifts, the hamstrings are trained in their lengthened range. For example, a Roman deadlift, a convention deadlift, or a good morning. However, the muscle can also produce force in a more shortened length. And this is where you can use a lying leg curl, a standing leg curl, or even a hip extension machine. So to conclude, yes, exercise selection is very important and it's a very important variable to manipulate, especially in cases of physique athletes who need to develop certain lagging body parts, as well as some strength force because even powerlifters require to build muscle to produce more force. A bigger muscle has more potential to produce contractile force and thus you get stronger. So to, to summarize, firstly, exercises are to be selected to fit each individual structure and each individual's goals so that you are able to maximize hypertrophy of the muscle groups each client wants separately. Moreover, this also matters from an adherence standpoint. Second, regional hypertrophy also exists and that's something that's being studied recently. Regional hypertrophy is something is basically, it means that muscles can, our muscles have muscle fibers which do not run the whole length of the muscles and they can originate and insert in between the fascicles. Hence different movement patterns or different exercises can target these different muscle fibers which can cause preferential or regional growth in these muscle fibers. This means that choosing particular exercises could target those muscle fibers that otherwise may not receive stimulus from a variety of other movement patterns. Other reason why visual hypertrophy could exist is that some muscles are biarticular in nature, meaning that they cross over two or more joints. For instance, the rectus femoris is only is a muscle which is the only quad muscle which crosses the hip joint and the knee joint. This means that during any squatting movement, when we're coming up in the concentric phase, the rectus femoris is shortening at the knee because it's extending the knee, but also it's lengthening at the hip because you're causing hip extension. So what's happening here is that the rectus femoris is working two times and the muscle is not a good source of, of force application when you are having to produce force at two different points. And that causes the rectus femoris to not only really change a lot of length and hence it's playing a more of a stability kind of role rather than a force producing active role. Hence, you require exercises of movement patterns which isolate the knee and keep the hip static, for example, a leg extension or a CC squat. The same goes for bicep femoris, short head of the hamstring group of muscles. You know, the short head does not cross the hip joint, but it crosses the knee joint, uh, which requires certain isolation movements, for example, a lying leg curl, a seated leg curl, or a standing leg curl to isolate the knee where the hip is static and you're only flexing the knee. 
Other example is the biceps during the rowing movement or what if you pulling movement. During a row or a pull movement, the biceps are contracting at the elbow because you're causing elbow flexion and you're also causing shoulder extension. Now, because it's lengthening at the shoulder and flexing at the, because it's lengthening at the shoulder and contracting at the, or shortening at the elbow, it's again working two times and the biceps are not good at doing two things at once. And therefore you will require certain other movement patterns to see growth. The last reason for, for some amount of regional hypertrophy to take place is that muscles have a variety of divisions, especially those muscles which have a fan-shaped orientation, for example, the, the lats, the pecs, also the glutes. Now, for instance, the lats span the posterior chain by originating in multiple areas. For example, the inferior border of the scapula, the pelvic region, the thoracic and lumbar vertebrae. Now, due to this varying degrees of uh, attachment points, one can change shoulder joint mechanics and shoulder joint positions to facilitate optimal growth or optimal stimulus to that particular muscle fiber or that particular division. Hence, you could choose a variety of rowing movements which have your arm in different positions, pulling from different angles, which would target region hypertrophy. Lastly, muscle force application during exercises uh, is also very important. We often assume that some muscles are contributing to the movement when actually they're, they're not. For example, the triceps. We think the triceps are working hard during dumbbell presses, for example, on a shoulder press or a chest dumbbell press, but that's not the case. Hence, in such situations, you require some movement which isolates elbow extension, so you're focusing on just the triceps solely. These are the primary reasons as to why excess selection is very important when it comes to maximizing muscle growth in those populations who require that as the main goal. For example, physique athletes, bodybuilders, or any sport which requires a good amount of muscle mass. Most athletes do not really take part in maximizing serious muscle hypertrophy because they are more specific to the sport. However, in some cases, for example, a powerlifter may have to focus on an hypertrophy block where focusing on building muscle is the goal and utilizing some machines, utilizing some cables and exercises which try and maximize muscle growth is important because at the end of the day, to increase strength, muscle growth can occur and must occur in order to produce more muscle fibers, which help to produce more force. And hence, excess selection is quite important when it comes to getting muscle from a hypertrophic perspective. I hope that helped and thank you.